So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this uh, Saturday morning. I know it's uh, earlier than we usually do these meetings, but uh, that's how it goes sometimes. So hopefully uh, I can try and get everyone in and out quick and uh, go through this Volnhub box. So for those that are new, welcome. Um, for those that have been around for a while, welcome back. Um, we've done a few of these uh, series of Volnhub boxes where we'll do some walkthroughs. Uh, I definitely encourage anyone else that's doing Volnhub boxes or any type of uh, CTF or hack the box that uh, can be shared publicly, you know, please, by all means, we would love to have uh, more walkthroughs uh, done. I, I try and do as many as I can, um, but there's always room for more, always room for more hacking. So I am sharing my screen. Everyone can see, I hope, this is Cali instance here. So. I have a uh, my lab for the, anyone that's just curious is uh, just it's a NUC and on that basically I have uh, um, a virtual box running so we can see right now I have uh, the, the uh, vulnerable box uh, running here in my environment but just a quick overview so this is uh, Drifting Blues two and it's a series which uh, hopefully I'll I'll have enough time to go through all of them I think there's six boxes that this author did in this uh, in this quote unquote series. Um, so no real information other than get the flags. It says it's easy. And then it gives us a little, little bit of information about the, the box itself. Some uh, like more technical information is um, maybe how it was created. And uh, sometimes we'll see that a lot of these boxes are made in virtual box um, since it's kind of the, the, uh, the, the, word, the hypervisor of, of choice, um, probably because it's you know, uh, free. Um, so this is an OVA, you can download it and then uh, fire it up and then start hacking. Um, uh, for anyone that has questions, feel free to just unmute your mic and ask or, um, you know, put in the chat. I'll try and keep an eye on it. Uh, maybe Linux Curl uh, or Churros uh, or, or Char, the other or organizers of the group um, can, can chime in, but uh, uh, either answer or just point out that there's a question. I'll try, I'll try and do my best to keep uh, looking over there. but. Um, I have multiple screens and I'm kind of going to be focused on the, uh, this, the, this, this one over here. So I might miss a question. So don't hesitate to, to answer or to shout it out. All right. So this is the box. Uh, again, for those that are new, typically the way this works is you'll have some VM player, you'll load it in the player and then you'll launch the box. And then that's pretty much it. That's about all that we do with the actual OVA. You can see here that it's asking me to log in. Doesn't really matter. We're not going to interact with the actual um, running instance in this sort of state. We're going to interact with it in its intended state, which is be we're going to be to hack the, the box. Um, so we're approaching it as an outsider. We're approaching it as an attacker. Um, and this box is just you know uh, in some other location that we happen to run across. So clearly we wouldn't be sitting in front of the the, the desktop you know with a login prompt. Uh, but nonetheless, the box is running, and from there, we will pretty much be spending all of our time trying to get into it from the outside. Um, so again, this is uh, Drifting Blues 2, and it's supposedly easy. Take that for a grain of salt, although this one actually kind of is fairly easy. Um, get flags. They'll actually, there's two of them. This doesn't say that, but there's two flags that we'll be uh, trying to retrieve. So tools I used. Um, trusty old CTF toolkit, which we'll get into, and then just some really basic tools, uh, actually, um, that, uh, that I use to gain access in, into the box and then to uh, upgrade privileges to do some privacy. Because generally on these boxes, uh, one of the flags is, is you're getting as a user, and then another flag you're getting as the root user. So some kind of call these boot roots, but nonetheless, there's two flags. One of the flags, we are a user when we get them, and then we have to figure out a way to elevate our privileges to uh, a root type um, to get the root get the root flag. So these are just some of the tools that I used um, uh, to quote unquote hack this box. So let's sort of jump in. So I use Cherry Street for my notes. You can see kind of everything here laid out that we're, we're gonna go through. Um, I'm going to, I'm skipping all the things for time's sake that I tried that didn't work. So, you know, maybe it took me, this was actually a fairly easy box. I think maybe three hours I think to complete or something. I, I forget. I, th I think I did this one live on the discord. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we're going to skip a lot of trial and error stuff and just go kind of into the direct path, uh, that I did to solve this. Um, so like anything, 
the first thing we want to do is figure out who we are on the network, like what our IP is, since technically usually we're running the box maybe on the same network that we're in. Um, so it's always good to know like what is the IP address of your Kali or whatever your hacking OS is. So this is my um, VM IP in sort of virtual box land. I'm on this dot 56 subnet. And then this is my like, uh, for lack of better terms, like uh, uh, internal network to my home. And I'm on this dot, dot one. So depending on how you have the box set up, depending on how you what the settings are of how you have your your box configured, um, it, you may it may you know it may play a role as to which IP you're you're looking for, which uh, IP range that you expect the target. Because right now we need to find the target. We don't know what the IP address is of this uh, the box that we have running here. Uh, sometimes maybe when they boot up, they might tell you. Uh, but it's always it's always good to be in the habit of trying to figure out well, what is the IP. I mean, in the real world, on an engagement, maybe you're given a range, uh, but a lot of times maybe you're just you're doing some sort of sweep and you have to figure out well what is you know what is the target IP address separate from other devices on my home network, which is another reason I actually run my Cali or sorry run the 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 Volnhub instance in a um, kind of internal only state so that it only is gonna be in this 56 range. It won't show up. I don't have it in bridge, because if I did, it would make it a little bit harder to, to differentiate what are the other devices on my home network, and then what is that target? Um, let's see, so I uh, charge asked a question. So I think Kali is installed locally on your host. That's why it doesn't show up. Yeah, so I'm actually, Kali is my, is my quote unquote daily driver for this. Kali is the OS that I have running on my Nook, that is, not a Windows and a VM running Kali or some Linux installation in, in a VM running Kali. Kali is, um, I guess you could call it bare metal. Um, so Kali is the OS. And then within that, I do have VirtualBox running. And then within that is where I have um, the actual uh, VM. Um, so I think if I go to details, settings, we can see here for network uh, that I have it as a ho host only. So that means that the box does not have internet access. Uh, which makes things a little bit more difficult and challenging, but um, it just works best for me. And in doing so, again, it gets this internal address, which again, makes it much easier to differentiate um, that this, this vulnerable box from other things on my network. If I had it in bridge mode, it would pull this, it would be on this subnet, which again, I have a, you know roughly 30 or 40 devices. So I'd have to figure out, well, what's, you know, what's my Xbox, what's this other thing, what's, the, you know, the TV, and then is this the, the target or, so it just makes things a little bit easier if you can figure out a way to segment the network or at least put it in a host only where um, it's going to be on a, a specific subnet that makes things a lot easier to find. Um, and it looks like there's another question. Char, if you can grab that, that would be awesome. And so, okay, so we know what, what our, our, our IP address is. I know what my Kali IP address is. I, I need to know this because I need to know uh, anything else that shows up is probably gonna be uh, the target because that's this is the subnet that I have it on. So now we can just do like a in map, uh, if I can spell, um, and it would be the, and what we're gonna do is we're essentially gonna do like a ping sweep, if you will, on this subnet. So it's basically gonna say anything from dot one to 255 or whatever it is. It's been a while since I've done CIDR, but it's gonna essentially scan that range. And it's not looking for any ports. It's just looking for any like live devices. Um, so we can see here, we get two results. I get this result, which we already determined that's me. And then we get this result, the only other result that shows up. So I know that this is my target again, because of the way that I have the, the, the box, the networking set up for my VMs, um, it puts it on that subnet. So it makes it a lot easier to find. Again, if it was in this, my public space, I would have had, you know, 50 devices or something show up. And then at that point, um, good luck trying to differentiate maybe. Uh, I have some naming going on, which we'll get to. That's why this shows up like this. But for the most part, we know that this is our target. So, now we have our target address. Now I know that that's the IP address for this box that we're going to attack. Um, what I like to do is then we're gonna run an actual in-map, an actual in-map scan. We can see here, this is basically what I used. 
uh, to run that. And so I'm just going to paste this. And basically, the rundown of the script is essentially just saying, show services, put it in verbose mode, which means it's going to show it as it goes. And then most importantly, this dash p dash is going to say, scan all the ports, all you know, 65 or 3,000. There's lots of fives and threes in there. Um, nonetheless, there's a whole lot of ports. And we want to make sure we always do this just in case there's a, a higher end port that is being used for the challenge. If we don't include the all ports flag, then there's a good chance that we're only going to hit maybe the first thousand. Maybe we get lucky and those are the only ports that are open, but I'd rather not chance it. Um, we want to make sure we're doing like a full scan because you never know. We, we have literally have no idea. Well, I do because I've, I've done this as this a walkthrough, but from the beginning, we'd have no idea what ports are open. We have no idea what services. We don't know what the author has open, how we're supposed to get into this. So it's just best that we do the best enumeration that we can. So I'll run this and we can see that we have a couple ports that are open, uh, 22, you know, 21, 80. So right off the bat, we know that we got SSH. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, we have FTP. That's um, not as common. And then we have 80, which is which is common. Um, so right off the bat, we kind of have at least three areas of um, uh, ways to approach this, this box. Um, and because of, as you do these and you do more and more of these types of boxes, you'll see that there's some you know, patterns and you'll kind of, you'll create some habits, you know, good and bad. I talk about that quite often. Um, knowing that I'm an app, AppSec person, uh, I generally, lunge towards anything on port 80 or 443, since that's what I'm familiar with. Um, so that's kind of where I generally always start um, and then work my way back or down, depending on if I hit uh, any uh, dead ends or anything like that or, or rabbit holes that I'm not able to get out of. So uh, I recommend always taking notes again. So you can see here, I just, I'm in my cherry tree. I have in map. Um, I have some, a little bit of information on supports, but for the most part, it's always good to get in the habit of notes um, so that you can reproduce things, but also if you have to uh, stop and pick up later, you know where you left off and what things you've tried and what things you haven't and kind of where to go to next. Um, so again, we have these three ports open and we're going to jump in on port 80. And again, it's just sort of habit. And again, this is just the space that I'm used to. Whenever you see port 80 open, the good thing to do or a habit to do is usually just go on over, just just go, you know, um, over to that address space and see if something loads. Um, nine times out of ten, if port eighty is open, it's open for a reason, and and things load. So sure enough, this is a what appears to be a website or server running, and this it's hosting this content, uh, which is very 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 common for a lot of Volnhub boxes or some of these uh, uh, CTFs uh, where a, a web application will be our point of entry if you will. Remember, we're on the outside and ideally we're trying to get into the actual, not only the application maybe, but on the actual server. We're trying to get onto the box. Um, so we know that there's a server running, so that's good. So we come into here, you know, basically it's just a bunch of images. That's the note that I have. <laughs> um, some things that we always want to do, maybe view source. Uh, we could try like what web, which will give us a little bit of information you know, about uh, the application. Uh, we're going to run a NIC2 next, and that's going to basically help us uh, sort of get an assessment of, uh, think of it as like a, just like an outside scan. We're going to scan the application for maybe some known vulnerabilities, and NIC2 um, is a really good tool um, to do so. Uh, another thing before I forget, um, because we do want to leverage our, uh, CTF toolkit here to make life a little bit easier as well. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put the target in here. And now, now that the target is in there, uh, wherever I go, um, we'll say like web apps, um, anywhere there's a, a place for a target to be, it'll be auto uh, injected into it. So it makes copy and pasting really easy. Um, that's kind of the idea that I had for this tool was a repository for known, uh, I guess, um, known tools to use during CTFs and things like that. So this is the uh, enumeration phase, this is the exploit phase, and this is the persistent phase. And each one of these sort of has tools kind of geared towards those um, 
those scenarios. So another lesson makes things easy. You just type in your target here. And then I can see now, you know, if I'm running a wet web, I can just copy this. The command is already there with my target address it's already there. We're looking at Nick2. I can see right here that the command is already there with my target address. It makes life really easy. And to demonstrate that, I can just copy this, head back over to here. I'll just erase this real quick. Um, and then I can just paste it. And then sure enough, you know, we have our, our command there with our target. So I'm going to run this. And again, this is just doing an external scan of uh, enumeration, trying to enumerate the application, maybe go to a couple known paths, look at a couple versions, see if there's any, you know, um, you know, like uh, if that's the Apache server is open to like Heartbleed or, um, you know, Shellshock or uh, just a lot of vulns that could be um, maybe leveraged for us to, to get a foothold. Remember, because we're still on the outside trying trying to get in. And we know a web server is running, and this is a, a, a tool for web applications. So we got a hit here that looks like uh, oh, not only is a WordPress login found, which generally means WordPress is probably running uh, on the site. Now, when we went to, I'll let this run. When we went there, we, this doesn't appear to be a WordPress site, but, you know, as you know, you can, you know, there's, there's a, uh, subdomains and then there's paths, right? So we have no idea what could be after this slash. Maybe that's where the WordPress application lives. Maybe there's multiple applications um, running on this box uh, located in, in various places. And again, this is the only page that we see. There's no links that we can see. If you look at the uh, view page source, there's no real links. So we don't really know what's under the surface of this application. There could be hundreds of different paths you know, in this application that, that we reach out. Um, so there's a few different ways we're gonna test that. Um, a good question here, uh, robots.txt. So that is another awesome place to check. And we'll see that there is no robots. Um, but that's a, that is a 100% part of recon that I, would, that I would generally do and that I, that I did do. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, robots is usually just in a text file that says, hey, these are, some places we really we don't want you as a crawler to scan, and that's uh, that's kind of intriguing to an attacker because those are places that we would go. We would want to go there and say, "Hey, well, why don't you want bots to know that these exist?" And a lot of times they're they're logins and other parts of an application that they don't want crawled. Um, so robots is, is highly powerful um, to attackers. So with that said, we we can come back over to Nick too. It's finished, and really this is the only thing good that uh, I found out of the scan. So we know that at least it appears that there's a uh, WordPress login, which probably means there's an, a WordPress you know, site. So I can just uh, head back over here and go to the blog and see what that loads. And sure enough, um, that's that's loading a blog. Now it looks a little, little different, which we'll get to in a second, but nonetheless, we can see down here, powered by, by WordPress. Um, and then we know that Nick2 did find that we got a hit for this login, uh, which is a very common uh, admin area to log into a WordPress site. WordPress is a content management system. So uh, it's it's kind of managed um, on the server, which means that you can access it from anywhere to make changes, you log into the, the kind of the, the, back, the back admin area uh, to do things to manage the application. It's not like a traditional site where you build it on your computer and upload it. And then when you wanna make changes, you change things locally and then upload it. This is all done um, kind of driven via database um, and you're, whatever you're doing, you're kind of logging into the application, making those changes and doing the management. So this is how we would get into it and very common here. So sure enough, we have a, a login. And so this is definitely gonna be where we're gonna spend some time trying to get in. And luckily there's been a whole lot of tools that make life really easy for us to break into WordPress sites. Um, so for those of you that are that are running WordPress sites, pay attention because um, this is exactly how attackers are going to get in. Uh, well, there's there's various ways. This is uh, this this is one of the easier ones. So we know that uh, we had Nick to you know find some things. We're going to run maybe a derb real quick um, just to be a little bit more thorough on our enumeration of the application. Uh, derb goes through like a dictionary test of the different endpoints that it, that it tries to look for. So it has like a list of uh, known uh, paths. And so it's gonna try and basically go through the, its list and say, hey, does 
slash admin exist? Does, you know, slash login exist? And whenever we get like a 200 response, which in web world is good, things worked. Uh, we, got a, we got a response back from the server that says, this exists, here's the page. Um, any other responses, depending on how you have your, your enumeration configured, maybe you see those, maybe you don't. Um, but for the most part, just think that it's going to um, uh, try all these different paths and um, report back the ones that it, that it uh, thinks that you might be interested in. Uh, so here's our derb command. And essentially, again, you're just going to see it run through a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to let it finish, but you'll see very quickly that it's, it's confirming that there's a web, uh, a WordPress application running. Um, so we can already see right here that it's just, just chewing through, and I, I stopped it. But you can just see that it's finding, um, it just hit right away on the WordPress uh, application. You can see here, I didn't put in anything after the IP. I didn't put a slash. Um, blog. I didn't do any of that stuff, but you can see right off the bat, it found the index, which is the page, and then it immediately found slash blog, again because it's working off of a list, and slash blog is a common path, and so we got a we got a hit on that. We got a like a, a two hundred back. Uh, in this case, it was it's a three hundred one redirecting, but we we're essentially coming back to all these where we're seeing these directories, and then the way it will work is it will eventually go through everything and once it's ex expelled that list then it will jump into one of the directories and then repeat the process go into a directory do the run the list all over again and just kind of it maps out the application the best way it can so again really all i'm looking for is just confirmation here i don't you know i didn't see any other uh, applications running it's just more confirmation that a wordpress uh, application is running so again going back to our notes here it's always good i think i have this a little off uh, I ran Derb, I think maybe in my notes, I wrote uh, Go, Go Buster. It's a similar tool. It essentially just is a uh, written in Go, um, but it does the same thing. It essentially works off of a list, tries to enumerate the application based off of response codes, and then spits out results. So you can see here, I ran the Derb, and then just let it run, and then um, kind of pasted the stuff here. So what have we learned so far? So we know that we were able to find our um, our, uh, our target by running nmap. And we saw a few ports open. And right now we're just focusing on port 80. And so we hopped on over to, to port 80 uh, via the IP address. And we found that there was a website running. Um, and that just showed this no way to interact with it, no menu, nothing to click on. You know, um, this is what we saw. We ran Nick2. And Nick2 essentially was like, hey, uh, we scanned this thing and you might be interested and we found this. Normally, if there is a robots, Nick2 is pretty good about finding that. So if there is a robots.txt, um, uh, usually your directory traversal finders like your Derb and your GoBuster would find them. Um, Nick2 would usually find it as well and then actually maybe spit out a line or two. So it might say, hey, I found robots and inside robots you know, here's some things, but in this case, no robots is found, but we did find, uh, or Nick2 did feel like he wanted to share that it found a login, which appears to be part of WordPress. And then to confirm that we ran Derb, um, just, just to be thorough, because maybe there are other directories that exist, um, but it just kind of reconfirmed that in fact, just a WordPress application is running. So with that said, and now that we have at least one potential way into or onto the box. We're gonna continue down this path or rabbit hole, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna stick on the web application path. Um, you know, Maybe through other uh, enumeration, I might be able to find out more information about the server and some other maybe vulnerabilities, although Nick2 generally would point them out. Um, so my hunch says, let's continue down the, the port 80 and let's continue down uh, WordPress. And that was how I approached this. So, um, uh, a tool to enumerate WordPress websites is WP Scan. Um, WP Scan is a is just basically it's it's literally meant to scan and enumerate WordPress sites. So this is definitely a tool we're going to leverage whenever we find a WordPress site. This is something that we generally would use to to help things along in enumerating um, the application. So we can come back to the. Again, this is kind of laid out in enumeration, uh, exploits, and then persistence uh, post exploitation. So we're still in the enumeration phase. We're, we're still doing recon. We're still trying to figure out, you know, what it what 
what is this thing? What is this application? What are possible ways into it? Um, so we're going to come down here to WP scan. And remember, we entered in our target. And uh, so it auto fills in that. So again, it just should make life easier just to, to copy and paste things as opposed to, you know, maybe you go to the Cali repository or the website and you can see a list of their tools and, you know, it might just say like, uh, you know, example.com or whatever that is. So you got to copy it then you got to paste it and you got to backspace and then you got to edit it to your target. I'm trying to, you know, save the trouble of that. So when I created this, I figured, hey, that'd be kind of a cool function just to put in a target somewhere and have that populate everywhere. So makes things a little bit quicker. So one of the functions of, of WordPress or WP scan is to enumerate users. So the, the philosophy here is that we know there's a login. So if I can somehow maybe get that login, get a user and a password, I can just log into that to the back end. Now I'm now I have you know pretty much complete control of the web of the application itself, maybe depending on what my user role is. Um, but that gets me into WordPress, the admin area. And then from there, there's a lot of things we can do, which we'll see uh, that allow us to actually get onto the web server. Um, remember, right now we're still we're still um, uh, visitors, we're on the outside looking in. We haven't gotten into the application. We definitely haven't gotten onto the box yet, but we're getting there. So um, we're looking at uh, WP scan, and specifically, we're looking at this enumerate all users uh, feature. So what this does, and there's various ways, um, it's going to try and figure out what you, what what WordPress users exist on the application. And let's see if this. Uh, Wrong. Let's see here. I think that unless I broke something earlier, but let's try this again. There we go. So what this is going to do is just basically run WP scan and try to enumerate the users. And again, when you if you're familiar with a WordPress website, when you launch them, you can create users. You can allow people to join, and you know they can be users. That's how you know uh, like a community of content might happen. You might have multiple users, maybe you're a writer and you're doing your blog and you have friends that you want them to write and do blogs off the same application, uh, hence users. So, um, and we'll, see. we'll share a little bit of an update now. And so this is something that you you might run into when you first use WP scan if you're not familiar with it. So what it's saying is like, hey, I don't, I'm not detecting, I'm not detecting a WordPress website. So a lot of times you may end up having to modify uh, the, uh, the path for it to find the website. And so right off, so we can see here that basically since WordPress doesn't exist here, right? WordPress doesn't exist here. Um, WordPress exists here. So this is the path that I had to tell WP scan because WP scan is going to, if it goes to the root FQBN, it's going to go, I don't see a WP login. I don't see um, any of that stuff. So any uh, questions so far? So we're about to run WP scan. Um, also what I've done to make life easy that maybe some of you do or don't know is a lot of times it's good to add um, a modify your Etsy file, your Etsy hosts to, um, to include a entry to sort of, uh, for the domain. So if I look down here on these links, you'll notice that the link doesn't say IP address slash blog index. It, it's, it, it, it assumes there's like DNS. It, it has an actual name associated. So if you see in the bottom left-hand corner, it's pointing to driftingblues.box slash blog index. Um, this is a key thing that you might run into many times and some tools won't work unless it has an, a way to actually um, uh, get to the actual paths correctly. Plus not to mention if I click on these links. So it also is prohibiting me right now uh, before I add the Etsy hosts, it's prohibiting me from browsing the site because this link is going to go to driftingblues.box and that doesn't exist um, uh, uh, locally. So it's going to try and literally go to that out there on the internet. Um, and it, it, it 
doesn't exist. So uh, you will have to add for, for this particular uh, box, you will have to make an entry into your uh, hosts file. So uh, if you notice here, this was the original, this was the, the, uh, the first Drifting Blues one that I had to add for the first vulnerable box and where this is the second one. So I, had an, I made another entry here. So this is the entry for that. So what this basically tells my machine is, hey, anything on this IP address, this is the host name, this is the name for it, or the, the FQDN, the domain name, this is how I would get to it. So now, because I have that, um, I can actually just go to, you know, one, these links will work as we can see here. But I can just go to, um, you know, this. I can just go here, and it will resolve. I don't have to necessarily use the I, uh, IP address anymore, um, which we'll will have to do um, for I believe the WP scan to enumerate the uh, or to try and brute force the login, which is where we're going to get to very shortly. So I just wanted to share that because that's maybe a gotcha uh, that if some of you are trying to get into this and you're clicking on things and it's not working or WP uh, scan is complaining or other enumeration tools are complaining, it's because you might need to add that, which is very common in some of these challenges. Um, and uh, if you notice what Char said in the chat, uh, also having the host name, yeah, add some header information, which allows for vhost. So yeah, in doing this, I could rerun um, some of my enumerations like Derb and GoBuster. You can see here I have an entry for vhost because this is kind of a template that I use. Um, this will actually also help with any like dots, you know, like uh, like subdomains. So like uh, you know, test dot drifting blues if that exists, where they would never pick that up if without the having it in my um, kind of my Etsy file. It it's not going to look for the uh, the test dot IP address that doesn't exist. It's the, it's the name that, it, that it exists. So you might find yourself having to enumerate and then you pick up a few things and you add some stuff and then you, you know, you go back and enumerate again and you pick up a little, a few more things. Um, kind of the, kind of the situation here. Um, but I'm so familiar and, and have the habit of adding, I kind of, I might do that, you know, earlier. Plus you'll also see in some of my commands, like you can see here, when I ran it, I had already added that because you can see that I have the FQDN in here as opposed to the IP address um, and the actual command that I ran. So just, just again, it's it's a gotcha. Just if if you're not sure, just see if you can add a host file um, to to get to. Just you can again, you can just go to the website and just look at some of the links and where they point to. I see at the bottom, it's not pointing to an IP address; it's pointing to a name. So that's generally what you're going to need to add so that your box can. Uh, fully recognize all the, the, the actual potential of the application. So we ran our WP scan, and if we scroll up some, essentially, again, it's trying to find users. So we got a hit. We did find a user. And there's a, lots of different ways you can find users. There's, a, there's some manual ways. One manual way is just if you just browse the website uh, and you happen to look at, you know, who's creating stuff, uh, you can probably find, you know, users. If you just go, you know, I don't know, we'll just click here. Okay, does it say who the, who edited this? Okay, by Albert. So we know that Albert is a user because he's the one that created this content. So there's some, you know, there's some ways, which is how this tool is kind of just doing a lot faster. And there's some other other sort of tips and tricks that you can do to try and enumerate users. Um, but for the most part, you know, you can just browse the site and kind of see maybe potential users just by who's posting stuff because depending on how you have the WordPress by default, it usually says when it was published, what category it's in, and then who is the uh, author of it. So uh, we know Albert's a user because WordPress uh, WP scan told us so, and we can just browse around and see you know who's creating stuff. And we can see this was by Albert. So maybe it's a different user. Maybe there's multiple blogs, multiple users. Um, WP, WP scan is pretty good at uh at picking those up so uh this is a uh this is uh, of interest and you can see here ran wp scan scroll down I, I highlighted hey albert's a user we're going to leverage that to um uh, our advantage because the next thing we're going to do now that we have a user we're trying to break into wordpress because we're trying to break into wordpress so we can upload a reverse shell to get onto the box which we'll get to but we this is half the battle right we have a user we need a password because through our previous investigation using Nick2, we know there's a login. 
well, and plus those just that just exists on WordPress websites. But if you're not familiar with WordPress, you, you know now that there's a, a login to the application. So we know we have a user on the application. Now we just got to get a password to the application. Uh, the good thing is, is that um, Kali comes with a couple password lists. Uh, the most famous is going to be RockU, and that's what we're going to leverage. Um, it's just basically like, I forget, like 14 million passwords. It's, it's insane. Um, a whole lot of real, real world passwords, at least as it stood like 15 years, 15 or so years ago, I forget when, um, when the Rocky list was, was obtained through hacking. Um, I believe it was the, the Rocky, um, partnership plugin with, uh, with MySpace. So that's just kind of dates how old the original list is. Um, but, uh, so we have someone coming in late. So uh, I made a, a, an error on my tools that I use. So I actually use Derb, but the results would be the same. So essentially for Derb, it's a little bit more simpler on the command line. You just type in Derb and then your target. And when we ran that, we, we saw that it, we got confirmation that uh, a WordPress site is running. Um, the first confirmation we got was when we ran Nick2. Um, that basically hit on, hey, there's this, this path here. Uh, which generally wouldn't exist unless a WordPress site existed. So we took that information and just sort of expanded on it. We ran a derb. Uh, again, I could run go go buster. It's going to give me pretty much the same results. They do the same thing based off of a uh, a list of known paths. It runs those, looks looks for the response code, and depending on that hit is kind of what it uh, will spit out to the screen and, and how it uh, moves forward. But um, we ran it anyway, and we just saw, again, we just got confirmation that Lots of, uh, anytime you see WP dash anything, you're probably fairly safe to assume there's a WordPress application running. And not, not only that, but we actually went to um, the application and, and noticed that from the, from the jump, we got this. This didn't really do, do much for us. No links, nothing like that. But after the enumeration, we saw that uh, there was a blog folder or path. And then that led us to now knowing that there is in fact a WordPress uh, site running. And then with that, uh, Nick2 pointed out that, hey, we have, a, uh, we have a login area, which all WordPress websites do. And we know that um, Albert is one of the users. So there's a good chance that Albert can log in, which is how he might, um, maybe he can make front end changes, maybe he can make back end changes, but we're pretty sure Albert's a user. Uh, one of the questions is, uh, my choice, Derb versus GoBuster. Um, I'm uh, GoBuster didn't always exist to me, so um, Derb has been around for a long time. So I kind of just out of habit, I would usually go that go there first. But um, I'm seeing more and more of these boxes. You use vhost and things like that. Um, I think maybe GoBuster is it's written in a different language. I think maybe it's more efficient and faster. Um, I'll use you know it's it, like anything. There's a tool for Every job has a, kind of a specific tool or maybe a few tools you can use. Um, you can't really go wrong, but a lot of times I, I like to be thorough. So I, I may use multiple. I, I may start off with Derb because I'm so comfortable and familiar with it. And then if i not maybe getting things that I expect or what I, like a usual thing that I would see, I might then reach out to like uh, GoBuster. I'm using GoBuster more and more, not because um, that, that I want to. It's I, I, I'm finding that a lot of these boxes are using sub paths and things that um, Derb doesn't quite handle. Um, so, but, uh, but yeah, as mentioned, as Matt's saying there, it's written in Go um, a, a lot faster. So if, you know, time is of the essence, <laughs> definitely maybe reach for that one. But essentially they do the same thing. I'm, and I'm being crude here, but they work off of a list. They basically have a list of all these different paths and it, it just tries them. It just goes through each entry um, and tries them. All right. So um, before we try and brute force this thing. Another way we can try and enumerate users is just trying to log in and looking at the response that WordPress gives us. So let's just say, we'll just take the word test. And for the password, I'm just typing test again. Now when I log in, uh, look at the response that I get. WordPress is saying unnamed username, unknown, sorry, username. Check again, try your email address, right? And maybe if you don't know how WordPress works, maybe that just seems normal to you. However, we picked up Albert as a user, and I'll just type in test again as the password. Now, when I try and log in, I get a different response. This is confirming that, that, that that's an, a valid user. This now says the password you entered for the username Albert is incorrect. So this is a good sort of 
just manual recon of you know how you could possibly enumerate or confirm that what other tools are picking up are uh, are correct or legitimate. Um, I could manually sit here all day long and just try a list of names, but you know sometimes we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We'll let uh, you know uh, work off the 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 sweat and the sweat and blood that other developers have done for us. Uh, in this case, WP scan. Uh, so that's one of the ways that you can try and also enumerate users. Again, this doesn't help with the password, but this at least uh, helps us differentiate between users that are real and maybe aren't, uh, or that exist and don't exist, um, just by looking at the response that WordPress gives us. So, so we know Albert is a user. Now we got to figure out Albert's password. Now, there's a lot of tools out there that could try and enumerate the, the the website itself and see if there's hints, you know, because everything's on the table here. We have no idea what the author, uh, how that person is intending us to get in. There could be clues. There could be actual blogs telling us things to do. There could be there, you know, there could be like random numbers published that don't make sense, but just, you know, and scrolling through, you don't see it, but, you know, like, you know, this year is published in 1945. Like, hmm, does that, how is that possible? You know, like there's a lot of things going on that could be either like um, a distraction or legitimate. Like we have no idea. It's kind of, I always equate these to like escape rooms if you've ever done them. Um, it's, it, you have no idea what's part of the challenge and what is just part of the, the set. Um, so, you know, that's what's awesome and also what's frustrating about some of these because everything could be um, a hint. You know, we have, you literally have no idea. Um, but again, uh, alas, I'm not going to talk about all the things that I tried that didn't work. We're going to focus on all the things that I did that did work, <laughs> especially for time's sake. So going back to WP scan, one of the really cool things that, that uh, it has is a uh, brute force sort of thing. Um, let's see if I remember where I put it. Uh, yeah, right here. So another function of, of WP scan is uh, a brute force login. So essentially we feed it a name, we feed it a password list, uh, we give it some threads and we see, you know, what we see if it can essentially log in or if it can, if, if, our, if Albert's password maybe is in this Rocky list. Now you have to remember maybe in the real world, it wouldn't be because passwords are way more complicated now, but authors know that the rock you list comes with Kali. And it's, it's, it's just an extremely common password list for some of these challenges. So a lot of times you, you will probably get lucky and the password will probably be in the rock you list. So this is kind of just where experience comes in. Um, but even without experience, just a good place to start. We have a username. Well, let's just try and brute force. Let's just see if we have a, a, a password list that happens to contain Albert's you know, password. Um, so I'm just going to adjust my target a little bit uh, to uh, fit to to go off of um, uh, what, what I have done since I've added the uh, the host file. Box, and I know that it's going to need to go to slash blog and wp login. Uh, PHP. I think that's correct. So anyway, so I would copy this and and to run this, the best thing to do is um, run it out of maybe where you have uh, the rock you list. So you don't even necessarily put in like a full path. Um, let me see what I ran. And so you can kind of see where we're at here. We're going to run the brute force. Um, so this is the actual command that I used, which is very similar to what I've just typed into the CTF toolkit minus the actual WP location. It's gonna find that on its, on its own, so I don't need that. And then I'm gonna run this from where I happen to have my Rocky list, which um, I need to actually navigate over there. Right now I'm in this thing. So let me go and figure out where I put my word lists. I think it's in my documents. And again, it just makes um, it just makes typing things sometimes easier when you're in the directory that the thing exists, and you don't have to worry about like um, full paths or anything like that. So you can just see here, like for this instance, there's a couple different lists that I have. We can see that uh, Rocky. Um, I also like to flip lists, um, so I have a, a Rocky Rev, and I might run them at the same time just for time's sake. So I might run 
two attacks at the same time, one starting at the top of the list, one starting at the bottom, because you never know what if the person just happens to use a password that's like, it's, you know, on the 10th millionth list or the, you know, line. Um, it would be nice to not wait the entire time to get to it. Uh, so you can, I, you know, have a habit of starting lists from the bottom. Um, yeah, and there, Matt's given some good hints too. Uh, there's, you know, some paths to where word lists exist. Callie does kind of put them all in the same space. Um, and uh, Matt's mentioning some Linux commands. You can try and do a locate uh, if you're not familiar with where it is. Um, generally, it's zipped first, like uh, on a basic Kali install, that uh, file is like tarred or, or whatever. Um, and you would just unzip it and then either leave it or move it to another place that or copy it. Um, probably move it because it's a large, kind of a large file. Um, but nonetheless, it's going to come zip, unzip it, and then put it wherever you want or just leave it. Uh, just note that you'll have to do a little bit of something before you can actually use the list if you're on like a default Kali install. Um, so now that we're here, we're going to run our scan uh, our, or our, our WordPress uh, uh, brute force enumeration uh, uh, script. And so you can see here, because I'm in the same directory as Rocky, I don't need to put like a path for anything. It's just it's doing what it's doing. And I can call this script kind of from anywhere. And again, what it's going to do is essentially it's going to go to this location. It is going to take the username. Uh, oops, not admin, Albert. And it's going to use something in this list. It's going to try and iterate through this password list, which is a few uh, million passwords uh, with the uh, max threads 50. And so I'm going to run this and we'll see it go through its thing. And then it's going to start uh, enumerating here. Yeah, so you can see it's, it's going through. While it's doing that, let me see if it, uh, how long it originally took, took us. So it doesn't tell me how long it ran for. I, I'm pretty sure, oh yeah, elapsed time, only a minute. So we'll, we'll sit this one out, we'll let it run. Uh, while it's running, uh, any questions, any, anything so far? So again, this is just literally going through, you can kind of see it whizzing by. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see all the different passwords it's trying. Um, so it's going to that login screen that we did earlier, that the manual login screen. Um, and it's going here and just trying to log in. That's essentially what it's what it's doing with the username and the password that we, we uh, the username Albert and then the password list. So we threw a list at it. So it's just going to run and it will just run until it either exhausts the entire list or until it hits something. Uh, so again, another technique could be I could run this scan in another window, uh, like in another terminal and just work with another list or try the same list in reverse to try and get get through that list a little bit quicker. Um, and where you get your list is up to you. Um, lots of them, lots of them out there. But again, we use the Rocky because it's it's so co common and popular. And with awesome news and success, we see we have a valid combination. Uh, it in fact is you know username Albert password Scotland one. So this is phenomenal. Now we're gonna we're gonna be able to actually log into the WordPress instance um, and do even more damage. Unfortunately for this. Uh, or WordPress person, user. Um, so again, anyone out there using uh, WordPress, please be aware that tools like this exist that are used quite often to try and enumerate the application um, and to possibly brute force your way into it. Now, there are other lots of other ways, depending on the version of WordPress. Um, are there known vulnerabilities, which you know some come out all the time? It's also important to make sure you're updating stuff so that you're not, you don't fall uh, into a category of an outdated version of WordPress that has known vulnerabilities, because this is the, the I don't want to say the easy way, but this is like the low, the low hanging fruit way to try and get into something. It's just get it, just try and guess the password and get in. Um, if the application itself is vulnerable, then I don't even need to probably, I don't need to worry about a username or password. I could just exploit a vulnerability in WordPress or in a plugin that you may be using or, or something, you know, something to that nature. So it's just really important um, as just a side, as a tangent, kind of a, a matter of fact of make sure your WordPress installations are up to date and make sure any plugins that you use are up to date because those are just known ways that, uh, to get into WordPress applications. Now, if you do all that and you use a terrible password, that's that's on you. Um, 
so <laughs> you know, use stronger passwords. Um, it, you're only as secure as your weakest link, you know? So the downside is that you also, if you are managing an application like this with multiple users, you need to enforce a better password policy for everyone because maybe you use a really strong password, but as Char mentioned, maybe another user uses, you know, poopy one, um, or in this case, Scotland one. So you can put all the security measures you want in place, but if someone else uses a terrible password, um, that's kind of all for naught. So we're off to a good start here. As my notes show, we, we ran, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. We ran the, uh, the brute force and we got, we got a hit um, for Scotland. So now with that, we can literally just walk on in. So type right. So cool. Hey, what do you know? We are on the WordPress application. We are in as in, you can, you can say administrator. I don't really know the, 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 the role of this person, but essentially um, I'm logged into the WordPress application to manage the WordPress, WordPress, the content, whatever, uh, whatever this user, whatever Albert can do, um, I, I can do now because I essentially, I logged in as Albert. Um, which word list may I use? I would use Rockyu. That comes with Kali. It's probably maybe it. Uh, I'm. I don't use too many other. Um, uh, I guess hacking OSs like Parrot and all the other ones out there, Black Arch and all that stuff. But um, I know Kali. Uh, the the uh, Rockyu list is super popular. You can probably find it anywhere. But I just leverage what comes in Kali. There's a few lists, and Rockyu is one of them. So that's what that's what I used. Um, so. You could probably, you know, try and do some other brute force where it's, you know, trying every combination of letter number that probably take way longer. Um, but that's, I use Rock U. So we are now logged into the application. We're not on the box yet. We are not, we don't have access to the, to the web server, uh, uh, the actual like box, if you will, that's, that's hosting this, but we're one step closer because Things are going to escalate really quick here. We're going to get on the box in like two seconds. So a common technique is to, to try and gain access is using a reverse shell. And essentially what that does is that's going to leverage PHP because that's what's running. That's what the kind of core of WordPress or a lot of these uh, CMSs is, is, is it's like a LAMP stack. You have your Linux, MySQL, uh, PHP, and uh, Apache. Um, so we know that PHP is running. We know that the, that's a core of WordPress. Um, and so we can try and leverage PHP. We can kind of trick it into running a script that'll call back to us to allow us to remote kind of connect to it. And when that happens, we'll actually now have gained access to the actual server um, as opposed to right now, we're just in the applications management. Like we can, we're, we're in WordPress on the back end of in the admin area to make, you know, we can add pages, we can do media, we can post stuff, we can change the appearance, all the stuff that we can do to manage the application. But we're gonna, we're gonna leverage, um, it's not really an exploit, it's just a function, uh, unfortunately. We're gonna leverage some PHP to, uh, uh, do, to put up a reverse shell that's gonna call, uh, that's gonna essentially make a call back to my Kali instance. <clears throat> excuse me, and then allow us to, uh, to, to log in. So the most common, easiest place to do that is to, if we go to appearance and then theme editor. And you'll see here why in a second. So this, without getting into too much details, this is kind of how we can kind of customize different parts of the application. Um, and a lot of times it's literally just written in, in PHP. Um, we're going we're gonna to modify this 404 template. And you can see right here is my reverse shell. Normally when you come here, it's gonna be um, a whole lot of other code. You know, it's gonna be, it might look like this. You know, this is, I just picked theme footer, but you're gonna see PHP because that's again, that's like what runs WordPress. So you would see code like this and that's what gives us the theme footer. That's just you know, how that gets displayed in WordPress. So I can come to any of these templates. The 404 is just the easiest because you'll see why in a second, because we have to, we have to get to it in order to trigger it. Just adding your reverse shell here doesn't do anything yet. That's just part of it. We have to, we have to trigger, we have to activate our reverse shell, which means we have to visit the page to get this code to execute. So, um, so this is our reverse shell. It's just a super, we call them like one-liners. It's a PHP. It's essentially just saying, hey, do this, reach out to this IP, which if you remember from the very, very beginning, 
when we needed to figure out um, who, who was what, what was what, what's my Cali address versus my target address. Um, we know that this is my Cali address. This is how, how you get to this box from other boxes on this, uh, this network. So I have to tell um, my reverse shell, I have to tell it where to, where, to, where to connect back to, like where, to, where home is, where to call home. Because that's what it's going to do. When I activate that script, it's going to call back uh, to my Cali instance. Um, so we need to know, you have to know your own IP address. And you have to know your own IP address that's reachable from within your VM. Because we're like in a network within a network. We're like an inception, you know, KFC inside of Taco Bell. So you have to know, otherwise it won't work. It'll, it'll reach out to something else and then never get there because it can't. So it's very important that you know have a little bit of understanding of the networking that's going on in your lab or in your environment or however you have your VM set up um, to talk to other devices on the network. Um, so any case, so this is the IP address and then we need a port. It has to call back on a port. Um, I'm just using the old school uh, LEET 1337. Um, so which you'll see in a second why that's important. So essentially we're just saying, hey, PHP script, uh, call back to this address over this port and make a connection. That's just the crude de description of what this is going to do. Again, we, we erased the stuff that came there. Let's just pretend this was there. We erased this PHP and we injected our one-liner. And then you could just say update the file. And then this, this will now be the, the permanent code. Um, so now we got to set up a catch and then we got to trigger it. So the catch is going to be, we need to set up a, a listener, right? And so essentially you'll notice, basically I'm just using this the NC and then this LV and P and then the port. So this is telling my Cali instance, hey, listen to any incoming connections on this port. Remember the, the port was important because the port needs to match. Whatever I put here, I could make this anything for the, for the most part. This can be any number I want. This is just I'm old school. This is just kind of an inside joke. So we're using 1337. Um, so this is the port that I have to put here. If I change this here to be some other number, I have to make sure that I change this to match that. They have to match or it won't work. So I'm going to start a listener, which means that I'm just telling my box to just listen for any connections that are going to come over this port. So, okay, well, now you're asking, well, how do I trigger this? Like this just sitting here doesn't do anything. If I click update file, that doesn't do anything. That just that just changes whatever I've made here. I have to, I have to get, I have to execute this code somehow. And to do that, I just need to go to where this 404 page exists. Um, so if you're familiar with WordPress and where things exist, um, this is where it exists. Oops, where am I at here? Uh, here. So in, for, in WordPress, the themes are in content themes and in the name of the theme. And then I know the name of the theme because I'm here editing the theme. So all that's important. All that's stuff that you need kind of need to pay attention to as to what theme the version of WordPress is using um, and then what 404 you're modifying and, and so on. So we know that we're editing the 2021 uh, common theme and we know that we, we've edited the 404 page. So I need to somehow get to the this 404.php. Uh, and again, I know that this is the, the path the path to that. So we're gonna mosey on over to that. We're gonna change this to content. And then we're gonna to go to themes. And we know we're in the 2021 theme. And then we know we added and modified the 404.php. And when I execute this, it's gonna it's gonna trick the server, if you will, into running this code, which is then gonna give us the listener. And you notice when I run this, you might think, well, nothing's happening. The page didn't go anywhere. What am I supposed to see? You'll notice up here, it's, it's trying to connect. It's trying to connect to something. It's waiting for some sort of response. It's doing something. So this is how I know that it's working. I can also come here and see that it says connected. Uh, there's, that it's connected to this, this thing connected, reach back out to us. I have a question, can we copy and paste that code? So sure, you can, I can paste the code. And then also from, again, the CTF toolkit um, in our uh, persistence area, we have all these reverse shells uh, that are there. Uh, you can go get them, but uh, specifically, um, I'll have to paste for another, because this box actually isn't, uh, actually, no, hold on. Where's my, 
chat here. And so this is what I ran. Okay, chat. Yeah. There we go. That should be there for everyone. All right. So now that we've triggered our reverse shell from here, and then we went there, which which actually which triggered it, um, and then we caught it because we have a listener, and then this reached out to us to my IP, my Cali's IP over that port. Now we have a, a, a we literally have like a connection. So from here, we're we are we are on the actual server now. We are on the Linux box, and we can see that we are here in this var www html. We're we're we've jumped into the server in the WordPress sort of installation folder for the theme. That's where the reverse shell was triggered, and that's where that's where we we are at now. But we are literally. Um, on the box as www data. So for those that know, that's generally the 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 owner of the the www folder, if you will. Basically, anything sort of website related on default installations of like Apache and users for that directory. That's kind of a default user. So it's very common that you're gonna what I call come in or land as this user, which basically can't really do any. I mean, you know, we might get lucky, but this this user role is extremely restricted unless there was a gross misconfiguration, which, you know, which does happen. But, you know, assuming that's not the case, there's very, very little things that we can do is www data. Browse around, that's probably about it, which is what we're gonna do. So we know we're in this, uh, you know, we were there uh, in that uh, themes, you know, folder or whatever. Um, so, Again, to kind of jump jump straight to the to the point here, there's a lot of places we can start enumerating. We can start trying to literally browse everywhere, go everywhere, try and start figuring out the lay of the land, what folders, what do we have access to, what don't we have access to. The list can go on and on. You can spend a whole lot of time just in perusing your and your surroundings. <laughs> uh, but again, usual suspects, places we always check, you know, home slash root, you know, maybe go back into var www to see other other applications running. Um, maybe there's hints in the WordPress uh, installation. Generally, there's config files that are always a great place to look because that holds information maybe about the database and has passwords. Um, there's all kinds of places to go. But again, we're just sort of um, sticking to uh, the what worked, you know, for, for this box. <clears throat> So it appears there's a folder in home called Freddy. And um, inside of Freddy, there's user. So right off the bat, it's a good indication it's gonna be a flag, but there could be um, uh, not quite that maybe, maybe easy yet. Yeah, as you can see, it's um, not quite that easy yet, um, but uh, we'll get there. So let's do like a, let's, let's see what else we get. And let's see here. Oh, sorry, I can't type. So uh, upon further exploration, we find that there's um, some hidden files, if you will. We have this uh, .ssh, you know. So we have some keys here. Well, that's interesting because this is typically how we might be able to grab a key and then log back in as, we'll say, Freddy, because we're in Freddy's folder. That just happened to be where we stumbled upon uh, something that we found and just, you know, poking around the server. But again, to reiterate uh, how um, critical or important this is, we are on the server now. We went from just a, a browser or just like a, you know, browsing the website from the outside to not only getting into the WordPress installation, um, but now we are on the actual Linux, the, on the server running. Um, this is devastating. Even if, if this is all that we got, this would be pretty bad for, unfortunately, the owner of uh, this either shared hosting environment or this application. Um, there's a lot of stuff we could still do that would, that'd be very bad. But we're gonna we're gonna make it even worse because <laughs> again, at the end of the day, you know, we haven't gotten a flag yet, but we're gonna get, we're gonna get root. Um, so uh, first things first, though, uh, we need to we need to probably try and get in as Freddy, and then once we're Freddy, we'll probably be able to uh, to to cat out this user text, which is most likely going to be a flag. Uh, if I was just guessing, if I was seeing this for the first time, um, 
you know, again, we're looking for flags. As you do more and more of these challenges, you'll start seeing, kind of seeing patterns and you'll start seeing things that you kind of expect um, and your, your hunches and, and things like that. So um, it'll, it'll get easier as you do these. So we could just sort of cat. Uh, and sure enough, we have, a, a, we have that person's private key, which is terrible because I can take this key now and just log in as this person. Um, so and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we take this, you know, we copy this. Yeah, Freddie has to be fired for sure. Uh, we should never, this is not something you should ever keep locally <laughs> anywhere. Um, so yeah, this is game over for Freddie. <laughs> um, so with this key, for those that don't know, this is essentially what, what will allow us to SSH into without having like a password. So there's still gonna be some limitations. Even once I get in and it's Freddie, if I try to do things as Freddie and it asks for a password, I don't have that, but um, you know, maybe I can you know, change some things or change passwords, create, you know, whatever. So there still might be some limitations, but you'll see that we, we can circumvent a lot of that stuff. Um, so what we'll, we'll do is we'll take this, we can literally just copy this, right? And I can come over into like my local, uh, back to my Kali instance. And you can see here that I already created an entry um, for this file. So all I did was just do like a, and actually I'll just, I'll, I'll do it from start here. I'll just delete this, right? Or I'll, I'll call it something else maybe. Um, so I'll do like uh, nano and I'll call it just like a uh, key, right? And so that's just giving me something blank. So all I got to do is I'm just going to copy this, literally just like copy and then paste. And now the key's in here. I'm going to write this out. Uh, I use Nano because I suck. I'm terrible at any other editor in Linux. Um, and so now I have, I should have two entries now. I should have uh, ID, RSA, and key. These are the same. This is the one I did originally. I just named it the same thing that it was named here. It doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want. Um, yes, and Matt's getting to the, there's a, uh, a, a chat that mentions permissions, which you'll see, and then you'll see what, what we need to do. Um, so right now we have a key. And you can see that that's that. So now with this key, we can just SSH into uh, the box as Freddy. Because remember, we're we're on the box over here. Um, I'm logged in as WW Data, and I'm on the server. But I'm one. I'm a user with very little things that I can do. And two, if you notice, this terminal, this sort of bat, this thing that I'm in, um, is terrible. I, I, I don't know really who I am. I don't have a history of things that I've typed. Uh, if I hit the up key, you're going to see like this, this kind of stuff, which is you know terrible for trying to find history. So the, the shell that I have is, is very, very limited. But nonetheless, I have one, and I'm going to use this to, to get a stronger foothold. Uh, now with this key, I can just SSH as Freddy. So for that, you can just come over. You can see over here, this is the app data. Um, this is some of the things I can do. I'm going to try and SSH here. You can just literally, we're going to use this, uh, this command here, basically SSH with the I flag and then the, the key and then the, the, uh, the, the path uh, to, the, to the box. Um, awesome. Thanks, Linux girl. Thanks for stopping by. Um, have fun. Um, so we can do SSH. And you can see here, I already kind of have the I, except for we'll use key, because that's just the one that I just made. And then if I remember Freddy, and we're going to do at box. Um, and again, this is important because, again, you know, we could just use the IP address here. The name doesn't really matter. I just, I just have it. Um, and this didn't work. Hold on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, this is exactly what Matt was getting to, and I forget this is something that you'll have to change. So right now, this is, this is complaining that um, the the permissions are incorrect for this. Uh, so basically, you'll need to chmod this using uh, just chmod, and then use this uh, uh, permission set six hundred, and then we'll run it. You know, again, and then we'll. We'll see if uh, if we have a, a better luck. So, and also I'll make sure my my command is right and my username is right. Uh, but in any case, let's go back here. We can see here, and we'll do six hundred to key, and then that's done. Now we'll try this you know sort of whole thing over again. Okay, so I spelled it correctly, and then we can just do SSH. 
I key ready at and sure enough now we're logged in we're logged in as freddy because freddy was a bad boy and put his uh private key in uh his home folder which allowed anyone to sort of get to it <laughs> and use it um so yeah shame on freddy um because of that well two sort of gross negligence have happened here one user albert um, had a terrible password that was easy to be brute forced. And then the second one is Freddy, um, you know, had put his key uh, in a place that he shouldn't have that allows that allowed anyone to sort of have, have access to it. So now we are on the box as Freddy. You can remember over here in this instance, we were www data. Um, terrible shell you can see here looks nothing like this what we're used to seeing um, uh, very very limited you know abilities and things like that uh, you can see here when I did this ls um, and uh, this user text when I tried to cat the user um, it's actually saying like permission denied I, I can't but because of this this terrible shell that I have like you're not really getting much feedback but www data it doesn't have the privileges to open that file but now I'm logged in over here as Freddy and Freddy does have the privileges to open that file so this is flag one we have a little bit of a hint here flag one of two so we know there's another one um the the walkthrough did say or the the description on loan hub did say two flags so again it's pretty common that we're going to have a user flag and then we're going to have a uh, a root flag so that's where we're at now again just to recap we did some enumeration via nmap we found that um that uh this was the target address we found a few ports open uh, one of those ports being port 80. So we hopped over to there. We just found a, you know, a random splash page with a bunch of images. Upon further enumeration, Nick2 told us that, hey, it looks like we got a WordPress site here and there's the login area. We confirmed that when we ran Derb. You can also do the same with, with GoBuster. You'll get the same confirmation. Uh, you'll see some WordPress entries. Um, uh, and then we, since we did, you know, again, kind of going, pulling that thread, going down that rabbit hole, of WordPress, we used WP scan to enumerate the WordPress site. We found that Albert appeared to be a user. And we just said, hey, let's just take a stab at it. Let's see if we can guess Albert's password. So we used WP scan again using the brute force um, uh, uh, script and using the rock you uh, list that comes within Cali. And we got really lucky. We got a hit. Um, we got a hit that uh, his password is Scotland one. And with that, we were able to log in. And we were able to deploy our reverse shell and we set up a listener on our Kali instance. Uh, we moseyed on over to the path uh, to the endpoint or URL to trigger our reverse shell. And then once we did that, we got the, the confirmation here that we, we were connected to uh, the box. And when we did that, we were, we were logged in as www data. We were a user now on the server. So we went kind of very quickly from uh, the outside looking into the inside looking inside. <laughs> um, first we were WW data. And then we found that uh, uh, Freddie unfortunately had made a, a pretty new mistake on putting his uh, private key in a folder accessible to others. Um, so we were able to grab this key. And then from there, literally just SSH in. We did have to change the permissions to that, which is very common. Um, and then once we did that, then it essentially allowed us to, to leverage that key. And then from there, we were able to get the first flag. So that's where we're at now with uh, with Freddie and our enumerations. Now we're on the box as Freddie. And let's see here, is there is a comment uh, uh, what things you can do? You'll see here, this is just showing, uh, the history is just full of the crap that um, I've done. Maybe you'll get lucky if you log in for the first time, you might be able to see uh, other things uh, that, that that user's done, which is a very good good point. Uh, that's definitely something that we'll, we'll check um, or that you should should check. Um, is the history sometimes you can um, get a lot of information funny of uh, the fun quick little tangent <laughs> one of the first uh, ctfs that i char will remember this and laugh because i think that's how we solved it but one of the first ctfs i set up for the group um uh th this was quickly exploited because of that basically um i deployed a box and this was you know back in the day when we were meeting in person and a lot of times i would do ctfs where i would have a, a vulnerable box 
Um, and I would host it off of my machine, make it publicly accessible, and then everyone in the meetup would essentially try and hack you know, into that box. Um, unfortunately, I didn't quite do as much house cleaning as I, as I should have. Um, <laughs> so you could just have checked the, my history and pretty much jump straight to where your flags were. So that was a pretty funny new mistake. But anyway, anyway checking the history is definitely important. Um, you can gain a lot from that. So uh, one of the first things we'll do is just check what, what things can we do as maybe sudo. Now we're getting, we got lucky here that we can run sudo. Sometimes the user doesn't, we'll have to figure out other ways in, but um, for now we're, we're just dealing with what we uh, actually are um, being presented with. So it appears that Freddie can run um, in map as, as like root. Um, there maybe there's lots of reasons for this. You know, uh, right now we're kind of in uh, configuration user admin territory. So any of those Linux admins, you know, when you're creating users, you're giving them permissions, you're giving them access to things, um, and then this is where we can get into trouble if we're not paying attention as to what things we give, what tools or applications we allow users to access, and then are there any known exploitations within those tools? to allow for some sort of privilege escalation. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're actually going to um, use this nmap and our ability to, to, to run nmap as a um, as root to escalate our privilege to root user. Um, so yeah, so it, doesn't, it doesn't say all. Um, so right now we're just limited to uh, nmap, right? But there's a lot of things we can do with this because luckily for us, um, there's some there's some ways we can leverage nmap to actually escalate our uh, escalate our privilege to root, and one of those being the uh, the GTFO bins. So for those that don't know, um, GTFO bins is a repository um, of Linux binaries that can be used to escalate privileges, among other things. But for the most part, think of this as like uh, a hacker's dream of a list of applications that you can use to uh, escalate privileges or do things that you probably shouldn't be doing or be able to do with the user you're currently uh, given or the way you currently have access to that. There's a Windows version of this called like, I think, Lolbass, um, basically like living off the land. <clears throat> this is just sort of the Linux iteration of that where it's like, hey, here's a list of um, Linux binaries that you might be able to use to uh, escalate your privilege and things that you can do. We're focused on in map. Um, I could also come over to uh, the CTF toolkit, and I think uh, either under persistence um, uh, and custom community scripts, I might have, uh, maybe not in this one, somewhere, I don't know. There's so many things that uh, I get lost in my own application sometimes, but it's in here somewhere. Uh, but nonetheless, we don't need to worry about that because we can just go directly to it. And again, we're working on nmap, right? Because our enumeration found that that Freddy can, can interact with nmap uh, as, as root. And so we can try and leverage this to, to escalate our privileges to a root user. So we'll just come back over to here. This is an alphabetical order. And we can look for nmap. And we can see all these different things that nmap might allow us to do. And what we're looking for is like a shell. We, we're trying to, to, to get a shell. And then in doing that, since we can run nmap as root, then there's a good chance that when we get the shell, we'll be um, root. We'll have we'll either be root or have root uh, privileges. In this case, we'll actually uh, be root. Um, and it's just as simple as running this. It's just uh, just the way that you can manipulate some binaries, and in this case specifically in map. As Freddie, we can run this and then get you uh, get root <laughs> you. Um, and uh, there's a lot of other things that you can do. And essentially, again, this this sort of whole application that we're looking at. Uh, kind of gives you an idea of all the different things that you can do with each sort of uh, binary. Again, we're fo focused on nmap. So we're literally just going to do this, right? I'm, we're literally just going to type this stuff out and then see what happens. Um, so we can come over to here and we'll just give ourselves some space. The first thing we're going to do is type in this tf equals, and I believe we're just, we're just setting a... Uh, a variable the tf equals this thing and so we're going to just type what we see we're going to hit enter now that exists now we're going to echo this into that variable
And we're essentially saying, hey, put this, ex this OS execute bin sh, which is a shell, into this variable that we just created. And now we're gonna tell nmap to run this script because nmap can run scripts. Um, and because we can run nmap as root, we can essentially trick nmap into running a script that's just gonna give us a bin sh versus bin bash for our user. We're gonna now just get, try and get to uh, root. Um, since again, we can run nmap as root, we, are, we can tell nmap to try and execute um, where we try and execute our our code that we put into that. Um, and so from here, we just do equals and then we call the, the file that we put it in, which you could have called it anything. And from here, it, you might be wondering like, you know, what's, what's going on? Like, what, did it do anything? Did it work? Um, And I think I may have done something wrong because I don't think that it worked. Uh, hold on. Yeah, so it, I, I got to redo it. It didn't work right. Um, for those, if, you can't really see. I'm actually typing something. Um, and you you can't see. It, it's not showing me because the way the, sh the shell, this in-map sort of shell is working. But... I'm just typing like a uh, LS and then I hit enter and I'm still in Freddy and I'm still seeing that. So you won't see that. So this is a little convoluted, but let's back out of that and let's, uh, we'll try and do this again. So I'm back out as, uh, as, uh, uh, as Freddy. And let's, let me see here. Let me double check what I did. Yeah, do I need sudo? Yeah, you need sudo. Oh yes, you're right for nmap to call nmap, yeah. So thank you for pointing that out. So I'm gonna head back over to here. And because I didn't call nmap using sudo, that's, it didn't run as sudo. So uh, I can just essentially just, I should be able to just sudo script because my, all my variables should still, should still be there. We'll find out in a second if it's not. Um, and then the nmap. Oh, yep. See, get ahead of myself. You're getting that was me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> there we go so you notice the difference here before i got a dollar sign now i got a pound sign so again i'm going to type you're not going to see it but I'll, you'll be able to see the command that gets spit out so i'm just going to say who am i now i am root before i was freddy you could see when i typed it up top there before i you saw that, I, that i'm freddy and you can see the user i was freddy i ran this script now i'm root so now i can just cd to root and I ls and I can see there's inside of roots home, I have a root.txt. I can cat root and there's flag two. Congratulations. And that my friend is uh, drifting blues box two. <laughs>